Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update and welcome to 2024. Here's what I'm seeing this morning. So the next storm of consequence comes through as a southern track storm. It'll move through California late 1, 2, and a 1, 3, and then move down through Arizona, southern Utah, southern Colorado, and New Mexico on roughly 1, 4. That storm opens the door for the pattern-changing storm system that comes in. And the key window for that, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Colorado, is 1, 6 through 1, 10. It looks colder during that period. We'll have better snow generation. And we could be looking at a two-storm combo with one storm coming through and then another one right on its heels. California, you've got snow, like I said, late 1, 2 and a 1, 3, generally above six to 7,000 feet. It's going to be your best snow. And then another chance of snow, 1, 9 into 1, 10. In the northeast, so there was a storm that looked like it was going to take a perfect track on 1, 7. Looks like it's just a little further south now. That kind of pulls the snow out of uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. That could be just a one-day glitch, a one-day thing. We'll have to watch the forecast. But like I said yesterday, these things oscillate, and the perfect track is necessary for big snow. On 1, 9, 1, 10, it looks like we could have a large storm system for the northeast. So we'll look at all of these things in the, uh, the forecast for today. I want to take you over to uh, water vapor satellite imagery this morning. And so again, on this, your oranges and your reds represent your drier air loft, the moistures and the whites and the blues. So you can see one storm system right here. It's taking a really far south track. It's of no consequence. Um, the another, there's another area of low pressure here. Um, there's another area of low pressure right here, and then there's a big low back here. This storm will be eventually moving into California tomorrow night into 1-3, and that one becomes a southern track storm, and that one will deliver snow to parts of Utah, Arizona, um, Colorado, and New Mexico. This other storm, along with the one behind it, become players in the uh, the 1 6 to 1 10 forecast those will come in along with colder air initially into the pacific northwest they're com coming out of canada and alaska and then move down into the lower 48 with snow and colder weather here's the forecast radar and satellite by this afternoon this is the setup a couple of snow showers in the central mountains of colorado <laughs> other than that that is it here comes that storm system i uh, just drew for you over the pacific and there it is so that's 1 3 in the morning widespread snow from Shasta down to Ta Tahoe and also Mammoth, generally above six to 7,000 feet. That's where your best snow is going to be. Um, and then that storm, like I said, takes a southern track down into uh, uh, parts of Arizona, southern Utah, New Mexico, and southern Colorado. And that's going to be some decent snow through southern Colorado, northern New Mexico. And then look what's happening on the backside. So that storm will eventually exit. A little bit of snow for Denver on Friday as well on the exit of that storm. Here comes the bigger storm system into the Pacific Northwest. This is the one that's going to drag down the northern branch of the jet and deliver colder air. And you can see it. Look at that snow production all the way from Idaho, Montana, the Tetons, the Wasatch, and into Colorado. And I want to, I want to show you what happens here on the last frame. So while that storm really brings the cold air, look behind it. There's a second storm right on its heels that dives down. It rotates down through the Pacific Northwest into California. And that one should bring an additional shot of snow and cold temps to uh, the same places. Um, so it could be a two-storm combo. And there may even be one more storm behind this as we head towards 1-9 and 1-10. All right, so it is definitely a pattern shift after 1-5. Let me show you what uh, the jet pattern looks like here. So this is 1.5. You can see the opening of the northern branch and that uh, cold air is starting to dive in from the Pacific Northwest and out of Canada, out of Alaska. We're just opening the door. Here is 1.8. And at this point, amplified jet, you can see all of that energy sliding down through uh, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado with a big trough down into parts of uh, Texas. So that moves through um, low, low pressure number one and two. Now watch what happens here. This could be another storm system right here on 110. So there's a two storm combo and then potentially one more behind it here for 19, 110. You can see the trough pulling down cold air and then that's that low is sliding right through California but eventually rotate in uh, pivot into parts of Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and also Colorado um, through 110, maybe even 111. So it's active for quite a while. Let me show you how much we're talking about each period here. So not much today and tomorrow unless you're right along the west coast, Shasta, Oregon, Washington, and B.C. A little bit of accumulation there. Period two here, 
um, captures a southern track storm that comes out of California, probably, you know, four to eight inches there from Mammoth up to Heavenly and Shasta. And then that low would dive down um, several inches for Bryan Head, the Snow Bowl in Arizona, and probably four to eight inches southern Colorado, northern New Mexico. And then look up to the Pacific Northwest. That's the leading edge of that, uh, that storm system and the pattern change bringing in um, colder air and heavier snow accumulations for the Pacific Northwest. So here's the most active time period, 1-6 through 1-10. So you're capturing at least two storm systems right here, one to two feet for the Sierra, one to two feet for the Tetons, the Wasatch, the western slope of Colorado and southwest Colorado as well, and northern New Mexico does fairly well out of this as well. And look at the numbers up through northern Idaho, northwest Montana, one to two feet for um, a couple of those places, some decent snow through interior BC as well. Look at the Pacific Northwest, one to two feet of accumulation, Whistler, Baker, Rainier, Stevens, Timberline, Bachelor. So this is going to be an exciting period if everything holds together. If we get the two-storm combo, it keeps these numbers propped up to these levels. If you add an additional third storm around 10, maybe 111, that could certainly increase these numbers. So this is great. I like what I'm seeing with the cold air diving in. Let's go to the Northeast. <clears throat> so obviously some changes here. Um, since yesterday's forecast. Like I said, that storm potential on 1.7, the track is a little far south today in the data. If it comes back to the north, that pushes up the totals. Um, and again, there's one um, large storm potential on 1.9, 1.10, so you're seeing um, some of the snow from that storm system right here. So we'll keep an eye on it. That's all you can do when you're dealing with things that are this far out into the future. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here on this first day of 2024, and take care.